All right, so on this first podcast, sitting around the table with me, we've got Captain Anna. Hello. At, at Captain Anna, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think we just call you Captain Anna. <laughs> Captain Anna, yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't think I ever call you Anna, Captain Anna. Yeah. Uh, we've got Chris at Sick Wide Glide, Master Level Technician, 25 years experience. <laughs> blur, blur, blur. <laughs> blur, blur, blur. And we've got Justin at Iron J Moto, Justin James. Yo, yo. At the Extraordinaire. Oh, ow. ow. <laughs> I love that guy. That guy's so cool. I like how you're promoting. Thanks, a random fan back then. I'm over here like, I came with my own fan. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome, uh, welcome to the Blockhead Podcast. Um, I don't know how much of the cutting up is going to make it into the intro there, but uh, it's pretty much rolling super easy right off the bat. So this is our first time putting our little podcast room uh, with our podcast set up to the test. Good job to both of you guys. Yeah, you drank yeah, away job. from. I saw that yeah. too at the wow. same time. Oh, man, we know what we're That's doing. That's tandem right we there. We know what we're doing around here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this ain't our first Seasoned podcast. Seasoned professionals. Podcast yeah. rodeo. Right? Yeah, I'm the guy going. <laughs> I know. I didn't want that out here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. All right. So if you guys don't uh, follow the channel, if you're coming across this podcast without knowing about the channel, I would assume most of you guys know about the uh, the Blockhead Moto channel, the Blockhead Garage, everything that we're doing here with uh, in motorsports, motorcycles, all that stuff. Uh, so we decided to start a podcast because we've gotten a ton of uh, requests for it. Um, and the cool thing about podcasts is that it's longer media. Like we can sit down and we can have like longer conversations versus, you know, putting stuff on YouTube. Usually we keep it between, I don't know, like right around 15 minutes, under 20, right around 20 ish, maybe, uh, depending on what the episode is. But the cool thing about this is we can sit down and we can have more long drawn out conversations. And if you guys want to uh, listen to them while driving, if you need some entertainment and you know, we're going to be talking about whatever in motorsports, whatever, I don't know, hot subjects there are. It's just, I mean, pretty, pretty much a, we're just going to have some fun with it, yeah, which is pretty fun. much yeah. what, we've, the what I've done since like starting this whole damn thing. And so, you know, we're continuing on that thread. Um, so, and let's be real. We made a really cool room yeah. just for this. Exactly. Yeah, right? It's all set up with the mics and the lights. Well, actually, we got to get some cool. lighting in here. We do. And some stuff hung on the walls. It's a little hey, plain. Don't, don't, don't be too picky a yet. disco ball. <laughs> in time. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's, it's, it's with the button. We're like, boop. <laughs> hey, 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 that is way too accurate. You might get demonetized, bro. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> it's in a match. <laughs> So in this first podcast, though, um, I did want to have everybody that makes this blockhead thing possible because uh, so, it's it's incredibly important to me that you guys know uh, who the people are that are associated with this. Uh, I started this thing like five, six years ago, uh, messing around with a GoPro on a motorcycle helmet, and it's just absolutely grown to the level of us opening up our own uh, custom speed shop. Um, met a lot of people along the way, many of who I consider family, and uh there was a point in which I realized it wasn't like it, it was mostly my friends that came on board and made me realize that I can't do this on my own. And that's where we started bringing people on board. So in in this first uh, podcast, I, I basically wanted to bring everybody up to speed on um, what keeps this thing going. And I think uh, credit is just very much deserved uh, to these friends, family uh, that that really believe in this thing and that have come on board. So uh, the first person that came on board um, that was crazy enough to do that uh, is uh, Captain Anna. Uh, you guys, uh, if you follow Yay. the videos at all, <laughs> let's go. So um, yeah, there was a, a point in time where. Uh, everything was just becoming incredibly overwhelming, um, with correspondence, uh, and working with companies and I was falling behind in so much stuff. Uh, if you guys aren't aware, like whenever you start a YouTube channel, like you wear every hat, you are the content creator, you are the editor, uh, you are the marketing manager. <laughs> videographer, you're the marketing <laughs> manager. Yeah. You're the, uh, you're the person that's in charge of the finances. You're like everything you do everything. And so whenever like it starts to grow to a point, like you, you put energy in, in one place and like another place suffers. 
And so I was realizing that like I was falling behind in some spots and that's when Captain Anna and I had this conversation at Culver's <laughs> and she was willing to come on board and help. And it like, it was, it was almost, it was voluntary. It was like, Hey, like I, you know, she believed in this thing. So with introducing Captain Anna, uh, I basically call her uh, a Navy SEAL. She's the <laughs> she's the hero behind this whole thing. Um, she doesn't get like a ton of recognition, but she keeps the wheels going. Um, and without her, like none of this would be possible. She has done so much stuff uh, in terms of the bureaucratic red tape, you know, paperwork stuff that like is nails on a chalkboard for me. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> that like that I it would just never have been done and we'd probably be like operating this garage illegally at this point. <laughs> You're like, yeah, we're a motorcycle shop. No, a we're DL. just <laughs> We're just a bunch of friends wrenching. Uh, but yeah, for us to like be legitimate and all that stuff, Captain Anna has made that happen. So uh yeah, I'm just gonna hand it over to you, Anna. And if you wanna talk about kind of like I don't know how you got involved in this whole thing, like how we met, um, get the viewers up to speed and like who you are and your background and all that stuff. Okay. Well, I'm Anna. Hi. Cheers. <laughs> Captain Wait, one Anna. more time. <laughs> Children cheering noises. Right. <laughs> um, so Block and I met like probably like four years ago now. Yeah, it's been I a while. I don't even know anymore. Yeah. Uh, we used to live like in the same neighborhood and then um, uh, my husband and I were learning how to ride and we like drove by his garage one time. I'm like, oh, motorcycles. And then that was actually how my husband Aaron came across the channel was because he was he looks stuff up so much, you know, when he's like interested in it. And that's just not me. <laughs> but um, that's so how, that's how he came to learn of Blockhead. <clears throat> and then we just, yeah, like we he was working in his garage one time. We like. Rolled up and met nah, him. No, there's more to the story behind that. <laughs> there's your, a whole video little, that explains yeah, this. Like, yeah, that's a video about the power. For those people that don't know, Anna. This is me over here just <laughs> like trying to pull it. Like, come on, girl. Like, what's yeah, happening speaking. here? So before like, they before they the found video. it. Yeah. Don't, don't, ever, don't anyone else do this, okay? <laughs> no, do not do this. So Don't just walk up on a grown man's house when the garage door well, is working on his bike. <laughs> no, yeah. no, brother. About to get shot. <laughs> no, no. Just trying to like... Yeah, a Anna being about this. <laughs> Anna being a woman uh, naturally has these like FBI skills like <laughs> baked in. Listen, us women, <laughs> we be out here. Yeah. <laughs> no one. Y'all be watching. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of creepy. Yeah. She <laughs> don't ever think they're not paying attention. Oh, I know. I'm um, just saying. It's when you say it like that. <laughs> well, so she had said to Aaron that like, yeah, he always ends his videos like right around where we live. And then there was a video where we loaded Miss um, Block's uh, Rebel into the back of my truck. Mm -hmm. So you saw my truck for the first time in a video. It was and like it was the like, back wheel. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, you know, a Tacoma. And so yeah. it was like, yeah, Damn, you said you'd recognize you that FBI. in the parking Holy lot. Dude, she had like those little details, man. Yeah. Oh my. Right? So, Got deep real fast. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and hide then. your women, hide your husbands, <laughs> right. hide your children. And then, um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's just she basically how we from. confirmed, because, like, you know, had an inkling and then confirmed that he lived in the same neighborhood. And then we met, became friends. So, so come on, tell me, what did you do? Yeah. Did you walk up on him and, like, <laughs> hey, so I see a video and it looks like your rear tire. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it was, okay. How'd this go down? So we, we knew it was, like, the garage, because it was, like, the only garage with, like, motorcycle stuff in it. And then... Uh, one evening, um, Aaron and I were coming back, like we had been out of town and we were driving back and we were like driving by his garage just cause that's the way we took to get to our apartment. And <clears throat> he was, uh, he was there like working on his R6. <laughs> yep. R6 days. <laughs> and he was like, we're like, Oh shit, the garage is open. Oh, he's right there. And so Aaron pulls up and rolls his window down. He's like, Hey man. And block like pokes his head out from behind the r6 <laughs> and he's like you blockhead <laughs> well he was like, like he, uh, they rolled up and like yeah. they couldn't they couldn't like quite see me like i was behind the bike like the bike was, was between me and them on the lift and like i knew a truck had just pulled up and stopped like right in front of my garage and so i'm sitting there like waiting for them to leave 
And I'm just like, like hand on your hip. He's like, kind of thing. <laughs> like, and so then I hear, hear Aaron's voice like, Hey man. And I'm like, I lean, right. <laughs> I was like, he's like leaning out of the truck and he's like, this is going to sound weird, but are you blockhead? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, uh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, you know, like just a, I'm a fan of the channel or like whatever he said at the time. And I think you guys parked and like you got out and like we talked for a bit and, yeah. Yeah. And then I think the, I don't know if we exchanged information there. You and Aaron did. Yeah. We might have. And then uh, we ended up, or I ended up going to uh, Bento. <laughs> and apparently you guys also liked Bento. Yeah, we were there. <laughs> and so I came up behind Aaron, like super quiet. Anna saw me walking up and I like leaned over, like right in his ear. And I was like, hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> And he like jumped out of his skin. <laughs> uh, like, I'm pretty sure you could feel my breath on his ear. It was like, hey, buddy. <laughs> so that's how that was the meeting. So that's that's how we met. <clears throat> and then, yeah, just like, you know, sort of becoming friends after that. And and then, yeah, just like started hanging out and stuff, like getting more and more involved with uh, channel stuff. And then um, like we got pretty tight. <clears throat> And I knew that, like, because the channel was, like, sort of growing exponentially. And so at this point, it was just him. And so, like, he had so much on his plate that a lot of things were starting to, like, fall through the cracks and stuff. And um, this was, so we had, like, gone through the first FLMM, which just made the channel get bigger. And then the new year came and it was like, all right, time to plan the new FLMM. And it's like, how are you going to do that? <laughs> Like, there's so much to do. It almost <laughs> killed me. You guys notice how there hasn't been another one. <laughs> yeah, like, After 2019, there hasn't been another one because it's so taxing. Sheesh. And so it was kind of at sheesh. that point. That was a like, serious sheesh. Sheesh. I know. Right? Like, that sheesh. was like a genuine <laughs> sheesh. I was like, sheesh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> golly. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> and then we, yeah, we talked and it was like, look, man, you know, like, we're great friends and I believe in your vision and, you know, like, I want to see you succeed and whatever you need help with, like, I'm happy to help. <clears throat> and we just kind of went from there, like talked about what there was to do and um, like what I could start taking over. And <laughs> Chris is like shaking Sorry, his I'm head shaking like, my not head. Me, I'm like, like wow. wow what I'm the? like, good for her. Cause not me at all. Wait till y'all hear my story. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just basically like, you know, what do you have right now that you'd be willing to let go of? And I'll tell you, it was not easy because he did not want to let go of anything at yeah. first. He was just like, well, first of all, I don't even really do that much. Like I just record and then post stuff on YouTube. And it's like, <laughs> there's so much more than that. Right. And, um, and yeah. then finally like, all right, uh, you know, can you start handling like some communication? Like that's one of my fortes is communication, like reaching out to people, you know, talking to people and whatever. And so kind of like started doing that little by little and um, started talking about like FLMM with some companies that, you know, wanted to work with us for that. And from there, it just kind of like that, it just took on a life of its own, own like throughout time. And little by little, I just started getting more and more communication and like taking over more of that. And then eventually, um, so that was like, we started, we call that like, I was like the brand manager at the time. Yeah. And then somehow that evolved into like blockhead manager. Cause that's what we started joking is that I just manage him. <laughs> yeah. I think at one point I even asked you, I was like, how much for you to quit your job and just manage my life? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, and on. I was even like, Oh, haha, -ha, why would you need help with? And he was like, no, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not joking. <laughs> and then, so it was a lot of like, you know, um, like talking with brands and like seeing what kind of deals we could come up and like how we could uh, evolve our partnerships and then staying on top of him to like make sure that we would follow <laughs> up on the stuff that we owed these brands. That, that's the hardest <laughs> part of the job. We share that collection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I constantly uh, text. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> definitely the hardest part of the job. And um, Block, did you do this? <laughs> oh, shit. And sometimes I feel guilty as I'm sure you do, but. And so. there was, there was only, there has only been one time so far that there was like, I can't remember what it was, but I like kept asking him, kept asking him like, hey, did you do this? No, hey, did you do this? No, like every weekend and week out. And one day I used his first and middle name 
And he was like, oh, God, it's serious like, now. Oh, my <laughs> like, Lord. Oh, shit, she's never done that. I'm like, I'm sorry, Mom. I'll get right on it. Man, what was that? It was really bad, though. It was. Wow. It was really bad. So let me guess, it came out with a motherly tone? Yeah. <laughs> she sent she sent the gif um, that I'll kill you. Oh, yeah. From the office, you <laughs> know? Yeah. Michael Scott. Michael Scott. Like, <laughs> oh, man. I'll kill you. <laughs> I'm going to remember that and send yeah. the same one when I meet <laughs> <laughs> well then <laughs> it was it was a sponsor it was like a, a sponsored video like unboxing or something like that um yeah and the schedule just wasn't working out yeah like yeah it was all over the place and so and then from there it like evolved into you know we started talking about like ex- expanding even more opening a shop and um like little by little just kind of evolved into like operations management is what we call it but it's a lot of like Pretty much what I don't do is like the stuff you guys see on camera. So like I don't wrench on bikes, I don't record, I don't edit. Um, she does occasionally do a motor vlog. So yeah, okay, yeah, like sometimes ride, ride along and yeah, record some stuff. But, but those are like for funsies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then like on the back end, it's like, oh, man, what don't I do? <laughs> yeah, seriously, like that's what I'm saying. Everything, <laughs> like all of the the paperwork, the registration with the county, like there is so much that goes into setting up a business that it's like, yeah, it's a bitch, you guys. <laughs> how do they how do they expect people to like actually succeed at this? Like, if you had one person like trying to like do all of it, it's just impossible. Yeah, that's like. It's tough. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And then even afterwards, it's like you got places calling you. It's like, yeah, you got to fill out this form and you got to do this tax thing and you got to do that and you got to pay that tax upon that tax. (laughs) That tax says tax. Wait, I have to pay tax on the things that I already bought and paid tax on? Mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah, we're (laughs) a can of worms. We're not going to go down that road. (laughs) (laughs) Boop. But yeah, so uh, anything ranging from like um, the contact, like the merch store, the contact form in the merch store. If you email the info at Blockhead Moto email, uh, the Discord server, the website itself, um, like all of that. If you guys email those and you hear back from an Anna at BHM, that's me. <laughs> yep. And a lot of people do write like I'll email back and you know like oh you know Anna, and they're like. Oh snap! It's Captain Anna because <laughs> they're like oh not expecting God. that. I guess <laughs> Captain Anna, I'm such a big fan. Yeah. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like all of that, um, and then the stuff with the business. Um, you know, making sure we're staying compliant with local and state regulations, licensing, taxes, all of that. Super super Payroll. fun stuff. Payroll, <laughs> HR, <laughs> HR. I am <laughs> HR. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that'll be a dreaded day. <laughs> hey, blockhead, called me an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> Deal with it. Well, were you being an asshole? <laughs> yeah, all right. You probably were. So <laughs> he can't call me that. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, like to, after the face reveal, I wish y'all could see my face but, like, <laughs> over here looking at Chris, like the amount of shit that he's done. Hey, oh whoa. man, yeah, whoa, whoa, we'll, see. Whoa. we'll get to you. No, no, we'll get to oh, you. Wait your turn, <laughs> wait your turn, turn bud. Uh, probably, I feel like this is going to be a bitch session, right? right? <laughs> Maybe. Probably one of like the biggest undertakings I've done so far, other than like the shop stuff, was a uh, hiring an editor. Oh, um, that was big. Hey, hey, that was pretty whoa, big. Yeah, wow, what's that's up, y'all? you. Hey. You're in the house. So, yeah. That was like, um, it was funny because like, you know, we put out the call like, hey, you know, hiring an editor, blah, blah, blah. If you want to apply, like go here, whatever. (sighs) I think I got like 60 or 70 applications, which depending on like where you guys work, you're probably like, that's nothing. But man, that was, it was like, these applications just keep coming in. What the heck? My (laughs) gosh. That was crazy. (laughs) Wow. And so that was a a lot of stuff to filter through. Um, Dude, I will say though, like you. Anna is very big on organization. And so she had like a whole spreadsheet like wow. that she custom made up for this. And it was like, she sent it to me. To. I was like, damn. <laughs> wow. Like I'm, I'm I, impressed. I picked like the top, was it like top 10 or top 15 yeah. applications and sent it to you. Um, Justin here was, he was the first one. He like sent his application first, his portfolio, like everything. As soon as I responded, I'd get a reply back and like, 30 seconds. <laughs> Honestly, I have no life. I was just waiting for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> At least you admit it. Right. Dude, but that, that actually factored into like our decision because some of these people, like while they were good at editing, it's like they weren't good at communication and right. working with a, an editor, like, you know, 
states away, you know, remote essentially. Right. It's like you have to be good at communication. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's like we did notice like that was one of those things that we factored in. Yeah. And the funny part too was that like, um, so we had already previously connected on right. Instagram. On Instagram. And we actually like chatted back and forth a little bit during the application process, but like he had no idea that I was the one like going through the applications. Right. I didn't tell him. And so once I finally like emailed him and like told him like, hey, you know, you're like one of our finalists. He messaged me on Instagram. He was like, oh my God, I had no idea that was you. I can't wait, oh my God. <laughs> and I even, I knew that we have talked previously like through Instagram, like small talk. And yeah. obviously, I mean, I guess being a fan really of the channel, um, I kept it professional too. Cause I was like, I don't want to just course, be like, hey yeah. dude, <laughs> tell Blockhead I applied. So, but it yeah, was good. No, it was yeah. cool. And so that's, that was like a 25 minute recap of the things <laughs> I do here. Big responsibilities. That's a lot. Dude, that's, that's the, the whole purpose of the podcast though. It's cause you know, people get to really see this stuff in depth. Yeah. That's kind of a glimpse into, into Captain Anna. Um, hey, you had 25 minutes to speak cause you have the most to say. Do you I? probably have more uh, than he has to say. He's been be around long enough, so I don't know yeah. About that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. sure we can get stories out of him, but but you you hold it up, you hold it together. That sounded wrong, but you hold it together. <laughs> you hold it up. <laughs> yeah, she ke- she keeps the Anna's wheels going, Justin, right? <laughs> yeah, like I said, Anna is like the unsung hero of of this whole thing. So. <laughs> You guys do us a favor. Be sure to drop a comment down below showing her some love. Go uh, hit her up on Instagram at Captain Anna and uh, thank her for keeping this whole thing afloat. We appreciate it. I yes. appreciate it. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> You're so awesome. I appreciate all the appreciating. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate Jeez. this appreciation. <laughs> so following mm. Captain Anna, the next person to get involved uh, full time with this blockhead moto thing. And... Uh, we saw uh, a, a bottleneck, as as Anna was commenting there, in, uh, in editing. So for those of you that have ever tried um, your, your hand at a YouTube channel, you will know that the biggest time suck is editing. That's where most people fall off. So I, I get a lot of people that come up to me and they ask me, you know, what is your advice for running a YouTube channel, for having a successful YouTube channel? And my first response is always, you have to have a passion for whatever it is that you're creating because nobody is going to make you do it. Like you have to have like that passion is that fuel that is going to push you through those editing sessions that you don't want to be up like super late at night, but you have an enjoyment of sitting there and crunching out this thing that you're just like super stoked about and you're excited about putting it out there for the world to see and to get feedback on. And so you have to have passion first and foremost. Um, I have plenty of passion for this industry, but even with all that, there was still like a huge bottleneck with editing. It's like I would record a ton of content, but I wasn't able to sit down and edit it. I was working a full-time job for four years while doing this whole YouTube thing and, you know, growing it and shaping it up. And so one of the things that Anna and I had talked about was uh, finding an editor. I had gone to Fiverr a couple times trying to find, just because that's like kind of the thing you do. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I need an editor, go to Fiverr. Right. And so I went through two editors. Uh, they only did like two videos each and it just really wasn't up to my liking. And so uh, it, it dawned on me like any other time I've, I've needed help with something, I've always gone to the community, right? So the, the block fam. And so I was just like, you know what? Why don't I put out a thing that basically says like, hey, I need an editor, you know, to the to the community and see like, if there's anything that happens and little did I know that we would get like 70 plus applications. Like it was just nuts. So, uh, that's, (laughs) yeah, we didn't expect that at all. Surprise, Um, surprise. Awesome to see it though. And, uh, I mean, we had people apply from all sorts of different styles of, you know, backgrounds within content creation and all over the country, different countries too, like from Europe, middle East. We had like someone from Brazil, Wow. Yeah, we had people that so were many. like applying that created like professional commercials for like Porsche and stuff. Like it was <laughs> nuts, man. It was just totally wow. crazy. Someone who worked on like Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> But That's what's crazy. funny is that like you can you have are that. overqualified, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you can you can totally have somebody that has like a skill set that's crazy like that, but it's still not match. You right. Know? And so that's where Justin James came in and uh, he ended up uh, making that qualification for the top, you know, 10 or whatever. And then I think we chose two. We chose two editors and Justin was one of them. And so 
he came on board and started like helping us to alleviate mm -hmm. that editing uh, bottleneck. And so from that it, first call with him, because like once we chose the editors and let them know, we're like, you know, hey, we want to schedule a call to, like just to like talk to you and get to know you and like, you know, officially right. meet. <clears throat> and like from that very first call, first of all, like he was just so excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, you know, like good vibes, like just you can like tell, you know, just from the start, like you speak like the same language you're on the same wavelength and right. it was very just like oh this you know this would be cool to see it clicked see it, pan right. out. it was an, an immediate click i mean to be clear i was a fan so before all of this i i've been watching your channel so i was genuinely a fan of both you guys well so and why then, don't you why don't you start there we'll hand it off to you so how did you end up coming across the channel up to the point where like you put in an application to to start editing and all that. Well, I, I watched the channel. So every time you put out a video, I'd watch it. I'm from the Midwest. So I remember tuning in for like two winters when like I couldn't ride. So like I would just be glued to your content. Um, I saw the video where you needed an editor. You had mentioned it and I wasn't going to do it, man. Like I was like, man, this guy's probably going to have like hundreds and hundreds of applications. Luckily, my buddy Jared was like, I was telling him about it. And he's like, why would you not do it? Like, what do you got to lose? And he kind of gave me that little push of like, just, just do it. Like, whatever. If you don't get it, it doesn't change your life today. Thanks, Jared. Yeah. Shout out, shout out, shout out, Jared. <laughs> shout man. out, Jared. Yeah. Um, sheesh. Uh, sheesh, Jared, let's go. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, so then I did it. And then, yeah, and it kind of just started becoming a snowball effect where I put in my application. Then there was like an editing round. And then I think that was it. I don't know if there was two editing rounds. I can't remember. It was, all, it was well, so I think it was like submitting your portfolio was kind right. of the first one. And we checked out your stuff and liked it. And then it was, I, I sent everybody the same footage for a video that we were never going to release. Right. Right. And it was like a mock test ride kind of mm -hmm. thing just to see that. how you would handle it. And uh, like we, I, I really caught on to yours because you, you paid attention to the small details. Right. That like, I mean, I've been doing, I've been editing for like right. five years. And so it's like little details like the the watermark going behind the lower third thing mm -hmm. instead of being in the front. Like right. that's something I noticed that you did. That's exactly like, what he said to me. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like that the, the, the winner, details, right the transition. Telling me about that, like Bro, just that little detail. All alone. of it, all of it. Like how you use the intro, like the overlap, right. like with the audio, like going underneath the audio at the start of the actual footage, like stuff right. like that. The Some transitions, motion graphics. Yeah, the cuts, like all the little stuff. It's like that you recognize as like an editor, but it's all the stuff that people don't notice that right. makes it watchable. Right. It's almost know? like if the viewer doesn't even notice, then you've done a good job. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you were like, I, I, I noticed that throughout it because I was like, yeah, I know I had fumbled with my words here, but like you knew to cut that out, right. but string the video together. So it seemed cohesive. I was right. like, okay. Seamless. Like, yeah, he gets a star for that one. Yeah. Those Ooh. are those editing tricks that people don't know, man. Yeah. It's like a dialogue thing. Like my first pass is just a whole dialogue edit. Yep. Same. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Cool. Sure. Yeah, I know what that but is. Yeah, right. <laughs> Nerd talk. So, <laughs> yeah, we can notice I'm that. silent because I, I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Justin ended up, you know, starting starting to do the editing, and I think you were it was, you you were working a job full time, and so yeah. you're kind of doing the editing part time, mm -hmm. and you would do like one to two a week. Yeah, right. About one to two, because like, yeah, I did work almost. I think it was like ten to six, and then I'd go home by like seven, and then I'd edit from like, let's say seven thirty to like. <laughs> three in the Mid morning. Midnight to three in the morning. You guys yeah. would get emails from me at export to like 5 a.m. Yeah, Justin's a night owl. Yeah, man. It's true. I'd, I'd, I'd text, <laughs> I would text Bach and be like, did you see Justin sent that email at like 3.30 yeah, in the morning? Dude. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I'm addicted to what I do and I, I'm just as passionate as you guys and what you bring to the table. But on my end, yeah, I just, I love working and it's fun. It's just exciting. Awesome, man. And then... Well, so you want to explain kind of how it went from part time to so Justin is now a full time employee and he moved to Florida. <laughs> yeah, so just moved who, out here yeah. two weeks ago from Chicago. How are you feeling about that? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I don't know. It was like a weird like. Huh. There's some other things behind that. <laughs> yeah, what? that's what I was. <laughs> I, I, I know you were. I know you were. Is that uh, a serious sheesh? That was that's, a, that's a for sheesh. real. That was a, like. Shit. That was like, I love Florida, but there's just, it's it's a different climate. So it, it brings comes, different things into your apartments. You know what I'm saying? It comes with different experiences. <laughs> yeah. True that. These are yeah. new experiences. Welcome but for Florida. the most part, I love it. I think. Welcome to apartment living in Florida. <laughs> right, right. In Florida. <laughs> Do you live on the first floor? I'm on the second floor. So oh, I thought wow. that was my safety net. Like, no. being, like above the ground. No. 
like, do I just have to be on the fourth floor and I'm like straight or I'm just no, done probably now? Not. It's just the building in general. Yeah. Right. Do I say something about that Might so people well. just know? I'm like, yeah. Let's just so, yeah, there, there's there. a little bit of a cockroach party in my <laughs> <laughs> you know I literally, oh, it was man. like I came to cockroach work the other party. day. Yeah, I came to work the other I know day, you need and to I was get telling this off your chest. I, I so do, right? Now this is a confessional, man. This isn't even a podcast. <laughs> I was talking to Chris and Block, and I was like, man, dude, I like flicked the lights on at like 5 a.m. to get a snack, and I just broke up a cockroach gang fight in my my sink. Yeah, so, it's <laughs> you been can sl- hear them. Right? Yeah, it's been subtly uh, frustrating. But what did you tell me? What was the the one thing you said to me that I won't forget, and it made me laugh because because I grew up here, but you said they don't even go in the same direction. Oh yeah, they just, I know. They're like 50 of them and they go in 50 different yeah. directions. And they're and not it's even like, yeah. slow bugs. Like they're fast. Right. They yeah. run faster than me. Your eyeball it's can't scary. track them all. Dude, You're it's like, so oh, scary. Shit. It's what? scary. Yeah. Do you guys not have roaches in Chicago? <laughs> I've never had it's to deal with the roach climate. thing. It's That's different. Weird. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because in sure the winter they, they would die. I guess I never I'm really sure thought they about do. that. Yeah. Bro, but just wait till you come across the flying ones. It's just oh. not. Palmetto bugs? Oh. Palmetto yeah. bugs. Yeah. I, t- I asked oh them. Lord. I asked they were like, That's not a roach. That's a palmetto bug. When he oh first said he had roaches, I said, how, how big are they? Because you, we all know palmetto bugs. This is some, yeah. some big ass things. But he goes, no, they're like this big, and I'm uh, like, oh, German. that's a roach. Babies. And he's like, yeah, roach they're time. roaches. And I go, wait till you see the bigger ones. They'll fly at you. Oh god, he's like, <laughs> not even looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you're in like a, a beautiful climate. Is like you just have these like insane bugs. No, I'm, like, telling I'm from you, the Midwest. I'm, I'm small. I'm, I'm a town boy. Get a cat. Welcome to Florida. Get a cat. Yeah. You are not the alpha predator here. Right. <laughs> I wasn't even back home, so I don't know. I'm used to this life. Yeah, there is stuff that will eat you here. <laughs> the Australia of the right. United States. Yeah. Dude, for real. I'm but. talking about the people because uh, they're, you know, bath salts, but then also alligators. <laughs> <laughs> bath salts, mess. Ah. Have you seen Florida, man? No. Well, we need to enlighten you. Damn. Damn, I'm all scared now. <laughs> You want to give him Florida man? So if he if he never shows like if one day he doesn't show up for work, you already know that um, he had a flying roach in his apartment. Oh, dude. Yeah, I'm calling out of work. I don't even care, man. He's like stuck in the corner, like trauma induced. Like I want to come to work, but I'm I'm trapped right now. He's at the door with a knife. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. But I mean, I guess, yeah, besides the cockroach thing, um, it's fun. It's amazing. It's awesome to be out here, to be in the warm weather and not the winter. I left when it was like one degree outside. Ooh. Oh, dude. Went through a snowstorm just, on the Just drive a down. degree? Just one. Just It was just a degree outside. Yeah. And I had to pack uh, my everything, pack the Harley, the Grom, had my car on the trailer, and then like my apartment. Hey, the other day it was 36, and he even he said, "Right, this is cold." I know this is not where people are gonna hate me because it's like all year riding out here. But even even right now, it's like probably like 60 outside. It's actually dipped even, to like the 50s. Yeah, but it's, it's like 50s. But like, I was like, chill. I'm not riding. I'm all not right, though. Ride. All right, so whenever whenever I say, "Oh, it's cold," in my videos, the right. northern northerners always freak the hell out. Right, so I know a way to like trigger the Northerners is for like a Floridian to be like, "It's cold," and they're like, "You don't know cold." Right. I was born <laughs> in the frost. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, fifties back home, I'd be like, "Hell yeah, I'm gonna go ride." But yeah, I get it now. I'm like, it's like fifties outside. Like, I'm not gonna ride north. Fifties here is different than fifties right up north. And it would have been nice earlier. Like, it was like seventies earlier. Would have been awesome to be riding. Yeah, but no doubt, you know. But now it's like cold. Yep. But yeah, no, I mean, besides that, I think um, being in Florida, I mean, well, one, thank you for the opportunity. Both of you guys are all, all of you guys for, thank, for, thank you for, for wanting me even out here. This is crazy. Yeah, Can we talk you. about the first time he came down? And we went to Ace Cafe and he, he kept oh, going, my God. oh my God, I just can't <laughs> believe it. Like, I'm at Ace Cafe where like, you guys hang dude, out. <laughs> dude, like, I don't want people to forget that genuinely. I mean, I still am to this day, but I was... Uh, uh, a subscriber, a fan, or whatever. Like, I don't, whatever you want to call it, man. I still fanboy. I walk into work, I'm like, oh my God, Blackhead. Oh Chris. God. And, Black, and, and Blackhead be like, Anna's normally not Dude, here. She's here it. today. And I was like, oh my God, Anna's here. Like, what the heck? Like, this is real? Yeah, hey, no. You guys are real people. He, the he amount of times. He literally said that four earlier. hours ago. Yeah. I did. <laughs> so, so both Black and I, he goes, uh, I'm a fan. Like I, I'm, I'm a fan. You, I've been seeing you guys every day, and I'm <laughs> still like, oh my god. I get text messages what, from you guys. I'm like, oh my <laughs> lord, what is this? We're both me and Block are like, man, shut up. <laughs> like, so get out yeah. of here, like, bro. No, wait, wait, just sign no, my dude, shit. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, it'll today. get old eventually. You'll get a text from Block, and you'll be like, fuck, what did you want? I gotta get out of the honeymoon phase. This yeah. fucking guy. I know, right? Oh my gosh, seriously again, dude? I'm off the clock right now. Instead, it becomes real. Like, sheesh. 
don't even, I don't even say it. You just hear the breath like. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you should see me when he blows my phone up. Hey, that works both ways, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say the other night? All caps? What was it like? Oh, yeah. You're, yeah. Like, You're like, why? Like something. I was like, damn, you must have not wanted me to come to work or some shit. It's like, I see how it is. <laughs> Oh my God! No, I'm like, no, I'll be there on time, and you're like, why? Why? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> That's Pretty funny. Much. Pretty much. But yep. yeah. So uh, you didn't. I don't think you explained your background. So you did have a background in. Um, right. So audiovisual uh, kind of. Well, interestingly enough, I went to college for audio technology. My background is audio engineering and uh, producing audio. Notice, Justin is at the at the board for the podcast right now. So. Wicka wicka. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I went to college for that and then I got a job at this awesome are you, studio are doing, you really doing that <laughs> right now. Picture, yeah. Just taking a picture. I already knew I was already posing and everything. Oh, damn. <laughs> right. Even leaned over a little bit. Like, yeah. Right. So I, cool. I had to make sure it was good, but if I was leaning into it, I'd look mad weird. Like, but I was like, stretch the neck for the right? Neck tattoo. Right. <laughs> All my skin up here, like tucked in. It's like, dang, he's got a nice jawline. <laughs> Uh, oh my got God. serious. Listen, listen guys, think, this isn't um, my first photo. Remember, didn't we just talk about <laughs> this? I worked for a virtual reality company, so I did ambisonic audio mixing. Um, so I worked at this creative company, and that's kind of where I got all of my creative skills because I worked alongside some video editors, which is where I was able to pick their brains and all that. Interesting. I was I was posing. For, it was my best angle. Oh, that is. Yeah, I was just posing. Oh, interesting. Chris is flicking me off. You guys don't know. Oh, come on. No, I just want you guys to know the real bully is in this room. Oh, Christ. yeah. I think oh, we said HR. earlier. I think we said earlier. Like Chris woke up and chose violence. I'm like, right. yeah. Chris was oh. born and chose violence. <laughs> it's fifty fifty. Sometimes I walk into work and it's a garage. Sometimes it's like a prison yard. You know what though? <laughs> I'm blinking my eyes right now. <laughs> Glass case of emotion. <laughs> but yeah, I worked at a creative company, and um, that's where I kind of got all my creative skills with uh, video editing and all that. And then COVID hit, and then um, yeah, uh, that tech company went under. And then I started working at a motorcycle shop, and then working for you, doing uh, freelance editing and stuff. Yeah, with, part, part time. Yeah, here with, you are. With, Full story, bro. With now I'm story. here. Hard work. Do you have time? You Can you tell it again? I, 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 yeah, you want to? Like you left out so much, but sure. I did, but you I just mean, like but we skipped got... from I was here in in editing school, and then I went to a motorcycle, and now here I am. Like what? Yeah. What happened? Everything. Where you been? I've been around, man. What got you into motorcycles? Uh, I guess. Well, my dad. My dad. I grew up. My dad rode motorcycles. He rode a Harley, a Dyna Lowrider. Does he still ride? Yeah, he's got a Lowrider S and totally. Um, I didn't get to meet inspired him. Inspired by Blockhead's bike. I didn't get to meet him. I was yeah, down I with the with the run. Yeah, he's awesome. But, yeah, um, so dude, Justin's he, entire family is awesome. Dude, I love my family. Shout out, mom, dad, if you're watching this or listening to it. I don't know how you consume, but I love you. Aww, right on. So much. Sheesh. 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 <laughs> 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 Lovingly. <laughs> Oh, God, that's funny. But, yeah, again, being a fan, my whole family is a fan. So when I was watching your stuff, I would literally be in my living room with my mom, my dad, and my brother. And you met all of them because they helped me move out here. Yeah. And so my dad was super geeked to be here. Like, Yeah, they showed up, and we gave him a whole tour of the shop. And uh, right. Justin had told me, he was like, yeah, my, me and my family sit around and, like, well, you know, it's, oh, block it video, and we'll, right. like, sit you together and watch a video. And I'm like, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Well, we're Asian, so we were like eating rice and stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh, mom, two bowls of rice. <laughs> Blackhead. Oh, no. Sorry, that's. I'm, I'm Asian, guys, so it's cool. Sushi? Uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. But uh, no, I love my parents, man. My family's awesome, I think. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we were, we were all fans. We did it as a family. This is a family channel. That's super cool to hear. Yeah. It's just, it's. Seems weird, but it's right for you. I you know, bet. for me. Uh, but yeah, that's awesome, man. And I think I was we were talking about it, too, because it's not the first time I've heard of it where like, you know, a dad and like his little girl or their little boy or you right. know, we'll sit down and watch like videos together. So mm -hmm. it's really neat. Chris has been a challenge in editing for those <laughs> children. But you know. <laughs> you're an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Click the bitch. <laughs> right, save, stay busy. You're the one that <laughs> <laughs> So I kinda, that, uh, I give up. So, to like, you know, what Justin was saying, he got into bikes because of his dad. And yeah. this is like a, a family thing. Like, 
Um, like, so I kind of want to shout out my dad too, because hey. I got, a, I got into bikes cause of him. I had, he used to ride when I was just a kid and like my earliest memory is of us, um, slipping and falling. <laughs> oh my. Nice. Um, we weren't going very fast. Nothing happened. Like we just got right back up and, you know, got back on the bike and I thought like, yeah, I definitely want to do this. You know, slip and fall. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. When I grew up. Thanks, and I did. Cranes. And look at where you are now. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then also just um, like when I finally did start learning how to ride, um, our family friend Ron lended us uh, the uh, his bike to learn how to ride on. They took us to a parking lot. Him and my late father-in-law, rest in peace, Brian, um, took us to a parking lot and like shot showed us how to like you know change gears and get going and so it's like and they you know uh my father-in-law watched the channel when he was alive and like ron will watch the channel and like you know his bike is here to get worked on and so stage two baby hey yeah it's like you know my my dad watches not frequently but like when i send him videos and stuff and it's just like it totally is like a family thing it is i kind of feel like your dad is like like kind of like my dad you know like he he like I don't know. He'll do that. Like, I'm proud of you kind of thing. But like for me and I'm like, yeah. hey, oh, yeah, thanks, man. Like, he has definitely said that. The- like, sometimes he'll be like, you know, hey, how's how's Waka doing? I'll be like, oh, he's good. You know, and he'll be like, all right, well, tell him I said hi and that I'm proud of him. And I'll be like, <laughs> OK, I was like, <laughs> like, but what about me? <laughs> thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, your dad's awesome. I love him. Thank you. <laughs> so that uh, brings us around to. I have no good stories about my dad. <laughs> Damn, well, why you got to segue straight into the dad? Part? What an intro. Bah, bah. I was going to say how you got into the. <laughs> yeah, well, I couldn't share that because I don't have that kind of family. Oh, but we're I think your that's, family, bro. I think that's portrayed in videos and y'all bitch about how I am, but it is what it is. Anyways, you're, calm down. Um. <laughs> So you guys say I push Chris's buttons, but what I do is I bring him back. Like that's me no. grabbing and bringing him back from the brink. Bullshit. Dude, so you did some shit the other day. This is the guy that pushes day. you over the edge. That's a lot. your shirt and goes, I'm going to save you. Oh, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, yeah, I, that I, makes sense. On. That sounds right. I'm nah. going to be your hero. Watch. <laughs> right? I'm going to be your hero, <laughs> <Dude>. baby. <laughs> I'll take away your paint, Chris. Anyways. So, um, yeah, you guys, you guys, if y'all watch the channel, you know how Chris and I uh, met. Um, it was basically working with a dealership, and or actually, they don't. <laughs> I mean, I kind of really want to hear him say his side, and I'll say my side of how we met. Well, this is a whole different. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, this so this is how we met. This is his world met my world. Yeah, and where I was and where he was. So, so go ahead. basically, in the uh, the evolution of Blockhead. Um, one of the things that I started getting heavier into was, um, building, you know, modifying bikes and me realizing my own weaknesses. Like I'm not just going to tear apart an engine. And so it's like, I knew that I, I had to basically like find somebody that had that knowledge. And, um, whenever Harley Davidson announced the 131, um, I was like, yeah, like it would be great to be able to like learn how to, how to do that, um, and see what kind of power it gets. I knew it would be a hit on the channel because you know, the soft tail low rider S uh, and people really loving that bike. You know, they really love the dyno low rider. And so I was in speaks with the dealership with George and marketing. And, um, we were basically doing, uh, test ride videos, which, you know, you guys always love. Um, and what ended up happening was while I was there doing like a test ride, I think it was for the live wire, right? Live wire. Yeah. So, and, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like, I basically went out, rode the live wire. I was like, damn, this bike is crazy. Uh, and then they had just installed a 131 on a road glide. If you recall, I'm the one that threw that idea at you. Yeah, yeah. Cause, so cause Chris we, came over and he was like... I um, said, let's pair them up. Yeah. And well, so George came over and he was like, yeah, we actually just did a 131. Do you want to ride that too? And I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah, right. Like, I'm not going to say no to so <laughs> riding this new bike. 131. See, yeah. I'm already interjecting, but you went for the ride and came back. Yeah, and so that's... I went, I rode the road glide. I passed a cop like within my first five minutes and then I got stopped. And it's by... on footage. That, that yeah. video exists. And uh, then I got stopped by a train and I was like, you know, maybe this is fate telling me to slow the hell down. And so <laughs> went, did that ride, came back. I was giggling the whole time. 
Uh, I'm pretty confident most of the comments were like, you know, it's a good a good bike whenever like the person <laughs> recording laughing. the video is just laughing the entire time. So I was legit giggling like a schoolgirl the entire time. Um, and I was like, I apologize for it even. And then we get back and Chris comes up and he was like, I think the 131 is faster than the live wire. And I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, we should put them up against one another. And I look over at George and I'm like, can we race these bikes? <laughs> May we please do yeah. this? He, he, he put his eyes down and he's like, he's what like, I don't know. Nothing. He's right. like, I didn't hear anything. Uh, basically. Right. But um, yeah, to let me chime in here with that because it was his excitement that got me. Um, as you guys know, I'm pretty standoffish. Uh, it's what? my self preservation. You know, I didn't right? see that. You know. I'm so outgoing. <laughs> We've only for two weeks, bro. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyways, I, I'm usually I'm not always reserved, but I'm definitely standoffish. Anyways, he comes back and he is legit, like a little schoolgirl, and it made me <laughs> inside like feel like, damn, I this guy like I want to talk to him. I want to acting like a little schoolgirl. All right, schoolgirl I got an idea. You on. Right? Awesome. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like, totally take I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so there. sorry. I'm sorry. But yeah, we'll sure. Learn. But go ahead. For, for, for you, gay for the steak. Yeah. Right. So anyways, he, he, uh, he was excited and I, it, it got my excitement. Right. Yeah. So I was like, I said, hey, man, I said, you know what? We, I think the 131's faster than the live wire. And he's like. No way. And I was like, yeah, why not? Let's 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 put him up. So of course he had to get clearance from George. I talked with George at the same time. George basically was like, do it, but of course we wow. can't shout out George again. Say that. We can't say it that way, but but he True. was like, What I don't know George doesn't matter. did not say do it. <laughs> right. So George actually didn't said not to do it, but we just took the bikes anyways. Right, yes, basically. And we took them to Mexico yep. and we raced them down Mexico's streets and uh, Mexico lane we had a good time and he <laughs> any, anyways he he wanted me to be on camera and talk and I had nothing didn't want anything to do with that I was like man forget that and so <laughs> he's like let's just run the bikes right basically <laughs> like no man I want your reaction yeah. and so I think he got a little bit out of me, but I kind of was like, no, I don't want my face. I don't even want my name put out there. And he's like, why not? And at that time in my life, I was in a mental place of like, I was mad at the world. I was in the process of going through legal things with my ex to get my daughter. And right. there was some extenuating circumstances to, you know, I just didn't want your business out there. Basically. And I didn't, I didn't feel like I wanted the spotlight of anything on me. I was trying to live my life quietly. I definitely didn't want to be seen as someone racing motorcycles and right. not fit to have their child or whatever. So, so I, I just had all these negative things. Anyways, he, um, he was cool with that. He didn't fully understand because he didn't have that life experience. Dude, I don't show my from. face. I fully understand. Like, I, I didn't <laughs> care at all. No, but, but, but the whole, the, <laughs> all the other crap I was going through in that moment. Yeah, I don't think I heard about any of that. You were just like, oh yeah, like I just would prefer not to show my face. I'm yeah, like, okay, right. cool. yeah, maybe. Yeah. I probably didn't tell you that, but but that's where I was mentally. And so, like I said, he was he was very respectful of it. So he put out the first video, and then, oh, this is where it gets a little i feel like we went through a little bit of time maybe a month month and a half of not like no communication i was working you were doing your thing and then somehow maybe george wanted to do something else with another model coming out with you i think the next time that we had talked after that was um well it was actually the lowrider s wasn't out yet Oh, that's you right. Yeah. So diet. Anna, Anna, you and I went up there and we did test that's rides. Right. Yeah. And so I didn't like it. I didn't like the soft outlet rider at the time. That's when we, we met again. The ergonomics were meh. Stock, the ergonomics are meh on that bike. So, yeah. so that's when we met again was, was the low rider S and <clears throat> he ultimately bought it elsewhere. Which is fine, but <laughs> we just had to put that little just sneak, to, yeah. little sneak <laughs> that's, on that's, under the rug that, there. That's that just little stinger, yeah, right? Just I, I, he didn't buy it from us, but um, Man, yeah, it's that little stinger. Like, but anyway, well, right. elsewhere gave me a better low price. Low there. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 it does. That's all water under the bridge. But um, is anyways, it? <laughs> is it though? I didn't even know this was a <laughs> thing. Right? right? We have some other things to address here. Right? Holy shit! So <laughs> welcome to so, Blockheads Counseling Session. So that. 
that's that's ultimately what brought us together for the second time. And at that point, I was joking with him, but I meant it at the same time because I knew what I could do. I said, dude, let's put the 131 in the Lowrider S. And of course, at the time, Harley didn't have it out for a soft hell. As any of you out there that don't know, it's all the same parts. The only thing different about it is the tune. But at that moment in time, they couldn't get it EPA approved. Therefore, they couldn't approve a street legal kit. That's why there wasn't one available for quite a while. They had to go through the process to get them uh, pass emissions and be able to offer it legally. Anyhow, so I said to him, I said, let's put the 131 in your lowrider. And he instantly latched on. I said, shit, yeah. Like, yeah dude, I was like, one. will it fit? I've, he- I've heard about clearance issues. And he's like, no, it'll fit. I'm like, let's do it. I go, there's, wow. there's no such thing as clearance issues. The only right. issue is the tune. So... You were working with, were you working with Thunder Max or did you just get that from? No. So we had talked about uh, basically putting the 131 in the, in the soft tail and Harley had only made it for the touring at the time. This was like a, what? This was all, this was a full year before they came out with the the kit. Yeah. With the, for the soft tail that we were going to do it. And uh, so one of the, or the things that we were addressing that we knew we were going to have to work around was the tune. And so you were like, get a Thunder Max tuner. Or, uh, because, or the power vision. Yeah. And so but I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. At the time, I don't believe power vision was supporting your soft tail. No, that's wrong. You there was something that. about it that we but went there was with something we, we, Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was just for ease for yeah. auto tuning or. So I bought, knows. I bought the Thunder Max. I bought the cam plate, like yep. chest kit, SNS stuff. He started stuff. buying everything to build. And we were ready to go. And the tail. last thing that I needed was the actual 131 from Harley. And the idea got canned by management <laughs> because if we had done it, and I can totally understand it from a dealership perspective. So if we basically take this engine that's not approved by Harley Davidson for a soft tail and we put it in a soft tail and people see that it works, like people are going to be banging down those doors. But that was the point. Exactly. We wanted to be the to first. To make money. Yeah. We wanted Show to be you the first. it can be done. But that didn't fit with their business model. Which, in a way, is ultimately how we ended up here now. Right. But going back. Freedom. <laughs> going we can do back, whatever the fuck we want here. <laughs> it, was, it was an issue at that moment in time. So we agreed to shelve that idea until we could. And what did we do? Did we decide to just quietly do our own thing, basically? So we... Because we, we kind of forced it. I mean, that's just the real... <laughs> well, we got the, we got the 131. Actually, we ended up getting the 131 before Harley Davidson had even released a tune, right? Right. And yeah, so... We, that's what I was saying. Yeah, we, we were doing the Thunder Max. And then it was just kind of like, okay, well... We got we it wanted, almost two months before the tune was... Or, yeah, it was about a month, month and a half, like six I think it was weeks, around about five, six weeks yeah. before the and tune so was And so it was available. just kind of like, all right, we got the bike, you know, we got the engine in, everything's installed, like it needs to be able to run. So we put the Thunder Max on it and then basically started making content, you know, you know, 131, soft tail, blah, 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 dyno numbers, showing people numbers. And after that, it was just kind of like, well, okay, what do we do now? And it's like, well, how much can we get out of this thing? Like, can we break it? And so, <laughs> and so we just we kept run this up. to the ground. Yeah. Like it, it pretty much, that's how it started. And it's like, well, okay, well what's next? Like, what do we do next? Like we've, and we figured out with just the 131 that we had to install, um, you know, better clutch plates because uh, the clutch was slipping right? and like hard pulls. And so we did the and clutch not plates. horribly, but, but a dyno would show it. Yeah. You didn't show necessarily it. feel it, mm-hmm. at least not that extreme in that moment in time. Right. But the dyno is extremely sensitive, so it'll show variations. Shows everything. Um, yeah, it does. No lies with the dyno. Wow. Even if your tire is like feathered, it will show that yeah. in your motorcycle polygraph. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. Right. Well, yeah. Wow. So, so, yeah, we ended up uh, throwing on the dyno, threw a better clutch in there, did another run, got some power numbers, and then it was pretty much like, okay, well, what's next? You know, what are we, th- what are we doing next? And I think it was like cam after that, and then we decided. Uh, it just kind of grew. And, yeah. I like b- without us even knowing. Super organic. Yeah. But it was I, very that's organic. That's the best yeah. part. I think that's kind of how good friendships kind of start. You just don't even know. It's funny because so, you guys are probably talking about this right now and just kind of like literally like reliving the moment like, oh yeah. man. Yeah. 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 What, what's funny is like, you know, Chris talks about being very standoffish and in, yeah, like incredibly standoffish. So in the beginning, um, like he was. 
Just, well, you were you were trying not, to not a little bit, like incredibly, incredibly, <laughs> dude. Yeah, like Emphasis so. So for the really. for those you of you like that don't know, a like wall with fucking bars through right. it, and is that a lie? That, yeah, yeah. he didn't take a <laughs> <laughs> the bike that you yeah, guys built and just crash into it. Well, well no, in that pause was damning. I can still see who's on the other side. It's a glory hole. Here we go again. Gay for this day. Jeez. So in the beginning, like uh, whenever Chris and I started making these videos, um, it was it was funny because like working with uh, a technician, like they're used to being in their own space a lot of time. And so I was basically like in a like having like, holding a camera over his shoulder, asking questions. And so it was a big change for him. And so I think right. before that, even like your whole thing, like you asked me, we, we say like, you know, you have the whole 20 questions game. Like Chris asked me 40 questions and it was like, dude, I asked more questions than he did. Yeah. Wow. His whole thing was, was like, like, what do you want from me? What like, is your intention like like with a, this? Like, what is your, like what is your end goal? What is your, yeah, exactly. like, he, like he vetted me, he vetted yeah. the hell out of me. And it was, it's funny. Cause like, you know, I'm, I've got nothing to hide. And it's like, I'm just enthusiastic about motorcycles. And I told him that, and it's like, you know, my, I don't know, main goal. Like I'd, I'd like to have a shop one day. Like I think that'd be cool to be able to build custom bikes. And, uh, it was just like, shit, I'm just having fun with it till then, you know, right. it's like, or if it never happens, I'm still having fun with it. Like I don't really put like too many expectations out there. I just like to enjoy and share my enthusiasm for motorcycles. And I think you said you picked up on that. So like initially yeah. whenever I came back from the test ride, but then also like, um, I know you were saying that you'd f felt kind of uh, like stagnant and like seeing that excitement for it again, like kind of relit something in you, you were saying. Yeah, this this was pre pre COVID. Um, BC. Yeah, BC yeah time. this was pre COVID. <laughs> this was when the world was normal. Um, economy was good. You know, I was making good money. Um, I was kind of complacent. Uh, my service manager at the time was ultimately uh, the operations manager of the dealership and you know we had what i thought was a good thing going um i my immediate supervisor was a guy that used to be my service writer um you know i was in an odd place but a place i thought i was going to be able to elevate because i'm quite frankly after well i'm 25 now almost 26 years but after doing this for so long you get tired of it it's like anything right. else i'm don't want to like ruin the the romance for people but when you do the same thing for a long time of your life it gets redundant and you want to eventually elevate I, I would believe anybody'd want to yeah you think so, what's right. next right right yeah. especially when you're raising your kids and you want to be an example for them and you want to elevate and you i don't know just becoming a better father made me want to become a better role model at right. work so to speak i was the foreman at the time but i didn't feel like i was doing my guys justice if that makes sense and um Things happened, COVID happened, some people quit. All of a sudden I became service manager, but I didn't want it the way that they wanted me to do it. Mm -hmm. So I found myself being resistant to their ideas and they were somewhat resistant to mine. There was a brief moment where we both kind of, I had the freedom to manage the way I wanted, but I also wasn't able to do what I wanted because I still had to produce. So I was a working, you know, uh, boss. Yeah. So which gained a lot of respect with the guys I worked with. And then I love them to death, man. And some of them are my best people and will always be. Um, but at the same time, it leaves me on the inside. Like, wait a minute. I, I want to be here and I'm still here. Yeah, I moved up one rung, but I didn't get where I wanted. Right. And over time. I lost my enjoyment with that. And even Block was starting to feel it. I think some of it was coming on him with the way the relationship was with Blockhead Media and this dealership. So things, I'm going to keep that very PC here, but, but things just naturally grew apart. And I guess that's the way things work. And in the moment, you know, you feel like, I don't know. You can feel a lot of negativity, um, but it ultimately it happened the way it was supposed to happen. And, and we are where we are now. Let me back up just a minute. Cause we kind of like skipped through 
all of my intro. <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing this same bullshit for 25 years. As you, heard. Um, as you guys heard me say in the beginning, 25 year master level technician. It's it's all I've done since 1997. Yeah, I've wow. had a couple odd jobs in between. I.e., I've hell, I flipped burgers in '98. I actually worked three jobs at one time in 1998 when I was was 18 years old. Just I wasn't even a full 18, or maybe I was, but um. Hell, I worked at McDonald's, line cooked at Denny's, and worked at Scooters. Wow. So I, I like, this has always been what the work I've ethic. done. Yeah. Um, I do believe in work, even though at my age now, I wish I could retire and not work. Um, <laughs> Don't I, we all? <laughs> exactly. You, you exactly. want to tell people how old you are? Because anytime we say 25 year master level tech, they're like, what did you start at birth? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he came out working on bikes. Yeah, right? Right. He, he was yeah. born with a 10 millimeter. <laughs> I'm, I'm 42. I'm a product of 1979. Um, I started this at 17 professionally, and I use that with air quotes because, you know, you start on the wash bay. You start as low man on the pole, and you work your way up. And, right. And that's what I did. Um, but I've been in a shop. I've been in this environment since 1997 um i have i was my own technician in alaska meaning i was the only tech oh, i didn't even have a service writer for half the year um uh, for 10 years you know so you learn to manage yourself you learn to manage your customers their expectations um your promise dates your this that the other you learn to interface with the motor company really well because you have no one to default to and say hey will you make the phone call like i do now with you right, Thank right, right, right. um but yeah it's uh i've kind of learned the hard way by making mistakes by screwing up and i don't just i don't mean motorcycles but just how to deal with people um doing things on your own taught me a lot right but that's the stuff you don't learn in school you know what i mean 100 you know what i mean that's why i think your experience yeah yeah as a matter of fact i did not complete high school i was not allowed to i was kicked out of the florida public school system when i was Troubled my child. freshman this year guy, this guy yeah i had copious amounts of marijuana and they didn't like that <laughs> 1995 that was not not oh, the thing nothing's changed <laughs> nothing's changed but this was a zero tolerance <laughs> this was a zero tolerance state man this was a big deal that was a big deal back then that's crazy uh, my mother i went to court i just could have potentially gotten in trouble but my mother being my mother um, she pled her case to the judge and the judge gave me an option. And I, this sounds like what I heard from the old people when I was young, but the, he literally had an option. Either I go to jail till I'm 18 or I go to the Florida Sheriff's Boys Ranch and complete the program. So right. I did boot camp for a year and four months and learned the hard way that you can fight the system all you want, but the system's going to do what the system does. And it's up to you to either fall in line and do what you have to do or continue to fight it and make your life more difficult so as i said i've kind of learned my my ways the hard way all my life and meeting him which kind of leads to the whole you know i vetted him like i don't trust people I haven't for a long time. But me saying he's very standoffish was oh, so offensive. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he just said he doesn't trust people. <laughs> but, but, but this is this. I'm just being real. I'm being open with you. Like, because, you know, a lot of people don't know. And you might see me on camera and think, man, that guy's mad all the time. And it, a lot of that show. But a lot of that is true, too. Uh, we do this in jest. This is our legit relationship. Right. It so, really is. So, 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 <laughs> some days, Mom and dad fight all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but it's not it's not fighting because he's able to handle that. He, yeah. he doesn't take offense. And, right. and that's a rarity for me to find no. people that can handle my intensity yeah. without taking it personally. Because oh, I'll, I'll, I'll call you on your bullshit. Uh, dude, it's actually like in Seminole is the first time that I called you on your bullshit. And like, yeah, you kind of realize. One time he goes, um, 
Oh, what'd you say? Get the dicks out of your ears or something? Yeah, I was like, you're not hearing what anybody's <laughs> saying. You like pull the dicks out of your ears. Yeah, and, and I legit, I legit got mad, and and I had a moment where I was like, I'm gonna punch you in the face. Like I balled my fist. <laughs> bring it. And I had to. I Can had we to make stickers? Punch you back. Bring it. Yeah. I had the to dicks step. I had to step back. Now keep in mind, this was my environment. Right. I run this fucking show. Like that was my ego, anyways. Right. right. And, and I'm working and I'm with like, them, but I don't work for you. And you guys you. had just met, kind of a deal, no, right? right? This is a good, a good okay. Into so it. Yeah. okay. And as a matter of fact, Danny was right there. Yep. And Danny, Danny, bless his fucking heart. That man moved away to Washington State to get as far away from me as he could not take. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, Danny. But, <laughs> sorry, I, sorry, I Danny. I missed the shit out of you, Danny. But but if you do hear this, Danny, I hope I hope you remember this moment. But when he said that you there was an interaction between you and me, and then Block got involved said something and then was it anthony somebody else whoever the other party was someone else got involved and before i knew it i felt like everybody was attacking me and everybody I, was trying to help you and, and you weren't hearing them I, and I called you, i called you out for it and i was in i was in my fucking mood so yeah and i called you out for it so you know what <laughs> nobody else would call you out because you were their boss but you i you were not my boss i didn't have to be there and so it was just like, <laughs> fuck this guy. He's being a dick. Hey, Damn. so I called Dan- you out. <laughs> Dan- Danny was really good at calling me out on shit. And I, I need that. I need that balance because I know I'm human. Dude, every, and you were good to know. You were <laughs> right? I, was, I was like <laughs> noted. Dude, you were fuming. Okay, so I remember exactly what it is. It, okay. was, it was the rear hub. It was the hub on a freshly set of uh, powder coated wheels and a bearing like got stuck or no, a bolt had broken. A bolt had broken as we were trying to seat it. It like cross threaded. And so it was like the last bolt on like a rotor. And like if we if you ruined it, like the entire wheel was done and would have to be like you'd have to source a new wheel, send it for powder. Drill and it out. Ha- yeah, you yeah, had yeah, been yeah. waiting like months, like months and months and months for this thing to come back to complete this build. It was the the was Royale. It, the blue and black it, it was the it Royale. Was. Yeah. yeah. Love that bike. So I was under a lot of pressure at that moment in time. There was a whole bunch of heat behind the scenes from management as far as my role and what we were doing with it. They had brought on someone new recently that I don't gel with at all. There was there was so much more that I don't even need to explain. So this bolt was just kind of the tip of the iceberg. But yeah. I do kind of remember every this. single other bolt was fine, and then the like it was like the last one. And it's like as you tightened it, it got tighter, and as you loosened it, it got tighter. Yeah, and it, it got was stuck. Like, it's just like, it's stuck. like there's no winning with this. It's like you have to break it. And so we we're and basically I didn't sitting break there. It. Like I didn't want to go through the process of having to right. drill it out, tap it, whatever. So everybody's sitting around this wheel in the service department, and Chris is throwing a fucking fit, like just <laughs> like not happy. And I oh understand. I right, get right. it. I like it. That's frustrating. It's like you know the whole saying, like you're one broken bolt from a, a you know a twenty minute job becoming a two day ordeal. Yes, thing, yes, you know? yes, yes. And so that was that was it. The bolt was cross threaded, and it was potentially going to destroy the hub, which was going to like prolong the whole project. And so Chris was like throwing tools and super mad, like oh just my gosh. spit coming out the mouth kind of thing, you know? And so, <laughs> so Finney Danny, the Conor McGregor walk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So Danny comes up and he's like, well, okay, well, why don't we blah, 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 blah. And you're like, you just immediately like shit on it. Like just uh, yeah, like I probably stomp did. the idea. I'm sorry, and then Danny. Anthony came over and he was like, well, blah, blah, blah. And you were just like, no, I, I thought of that already. You, fu- <laughs> you were like, you fucking do it. And like nobody would do it. Nobody would touch anything. And like of people would come so. up and say something and then they would just walk away. And I was like, so I, I came over and I was like, all right, well, what the hell's going on? Like, you know, maybe I can like see some kind of something that somebody else couldn't right. and try to help. And I was like, okay, well, uh, think of the situation like this. You can't go forward. You can't go back. And I was like, so you have to break it, you know? And so like, it's one of those things where you have to like, like walk or go backwards in order to to continue going forward. Right. Right. And so it was like, there's no sense in prolonging it. Just do it and then make the best of it, you know? And so it's like, poetic. Pull, Man, he's pull so, the, this guy is inspiring. <laughs> hey, 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 hold on. Now in all fairness, he, he's totally right. And, and I'm not going to say he's not. I just want to add that you guys didn't, you weren't in my head. You weren't right. in my shoes. No, totally understand. At that moment in time. So it was, like I said, there were so many other things yeah, happening. Yeah, it's a frustrating right. situation. Outside Beyond of just this. even that situation. Yeah. yeah. And so I come up and I say something, and you know he reacts to me the same way that the 
he did to the rest of the guys. And I'm like, fuck this, I'm out. I start packing my shit, you know, like packing all my equipment because we were filming that day doing something. Right. You know, not, like I think we we're actually filming the build of that bike. Probably. Right? Yeah. And uh, I was like, yeah, I don't like I don't have to sit here and take this shit. And I was like, sorry for the rest of you guys, but like, right. I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> and so he says something because, like, you know, I was packing my stuff and I was leaving. Well, and you said some shit and it, we had a back and forth yeah. for a moment. And so I was like, you're being a f- uh, I remember this part. I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I was like, you're being a fucking dick. And like, that's when you walked away and then you came back and you're like, you didn't even have to. You didn't even say I was being a dick. You said I was being a fucking dick. And I'm like, yeah, because you're being a fucking dick. Ooh. And I was like, uh, you're not hearing anybody. It's like you got dicks in your ears or something. And I was like, people are trying I to help so you and you're shitting all over them. As he's saying that, my, my fist was <laughs> Oh, I did. Oh, like, my Lord. Uh. But wow. I, I know he, yeah. he was right. So, I, right. you know, as, as angry needed- and as in my own head as I may get at moments, mm-hmm. if you're right, you're right. I can't. That's the problem. I got to stuff it. Walk the fuck away and shut right. up. And it was just that moment where... He was right, and I knew Danny was right, and I knew Anthony was, you know, everybody else was right. I just was in my own shit at he that moment. He just needed somebody to call him on his bullshit. Right. Nobody would do it, and wow. it was, so it was me. <laughs> and I still do it. <laughs> yeah. To this yep. day. It's not as bad as that, but right. yeah, it shit happens. No, that, that was a different moment with a lot of different pressures. Do you feel like uh, that was a turning point for you guys, though? I don't know if that was the turning point necessarily, but it was a reaffirmation of like, like I need that. And I, you know, I'm not going to openly stand there and go, thanks. That's I needed that. (laughs) But but I was able to say it later, you know, after I was out of that moment, I could say, Hey, you know, thanks for calling me on my shit, but don't call me a fucking dick. (laughs) Call me a dick. Right. Not a fucking dick. I have to say, like, don't put the extra hate in it. Like, man, I I think, (laughs) I think, like, uh, like true friendship and like over, dude. I mean, I'm I'm working full time essentially with Chris at this point. I'm spending filming forty hours a week. Yeah, dude. I'm like no joke. I'm spending like like you get to know somebody like pretty quickly whenever you're spending like forty hours a week with them, right? And so, like, I'm spending, like, week after week after week, you know, like, just learning all about Chris. And, like, you know, we talk about anything and everything. And so, like, when it gets to that point, like, I think true friendships, like, real actual friends are able to, like, look at you and be like, you're being an asshole. Yeah. Or, like, you know, you're you're you wrong, dude. Yeah. And, yeah. and kind of explain, like, why you're, like, if I'm being an asshole, if I'm being a fucking dick, if I'm wrong, call me on that shit. Like, I have always told people, like... If I'm wrong, check me. Like, I please have, I think check we me. Have. You and I have done yeah. that once or oh, twice. Yeah. For sure. And it goes both ways. It's just, right. yeah. I, don't that's, ha- that's... I don't have to handle him like he handles me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow. that's, I think that's like actual friendship whenever you can like, you know, look somebody in the eye and be like, yo, like you're, you're wrong, man. Like you need to like chill the fuck out. Right. Take, take a walk. You know, I agree. Said too. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, it's, it's kind of funny, like how the relationship shaped up and like how it still currently is because like Anna said, it's like mom and dad are fighting. And that's not, that's <laughs> definitely not like Chris and I, I don't think we fight. It's just we like very a, rarely fight. Actually, You have an opinion. I have an opinion. And then it's kind of like meeting somewhere in the middle after like discussing it. Right. You know? yeah. 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 I do my best to keep myself in check. I'm hard on myself. That's the real incredibly. And I, I know I'm probably too hard. As a matter of fact, I heard from Melissa last night that I was, too hard on myself about failing to get done the job yesterday. But I think that's because um, you care. I mean, it, right? It, it is, but yeah. it's very mixed. So, so I'm a, I'm a little bit different personality, and I'm sure there's plenty of people out there hearing this that are going to relate and go, oh, dude, I totally get you. Uh, but we don't talk. That's the thing. People like me don't talk about me or ourselves a lot. But I almost care too much. I care so much that I, I know I'll get hurt for showing that I care. So I keep myself guarded and I stay inside myself because if I let you know I care, that gives you or you or you an opportunity to shit on me or exploit me. It's been done to me my entire life. So not trying to get too deep or real here, but but that's that's what ultimately shapes my mentality. And it takes a special kind of person to understand that with me, like him, like Melissa, and you too will hopefully understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, just fucking hate me and be like, that guy's Justin, good luck, bud. I know, right? 
I'm like here every day with him now. I'm like, oh, like, shit. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's mad. Anna, oh, can he's, you come into the shop? <laughs> mm, I'm busy. <laughs> Just, is Chris going to be there? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm scared. Just be like, he's he's the sitting show. there going, wait a minute. He's mad. I wonder what he cares about today. You know, what's today. funny is I, <laughs> I don't think I, I'm like scared. I think it's just I, I like solutions. So like as you can tell, when we were kind of in that little heated moment, um, you know, I was just trying to stab him, trying to make it easier for oh, you. I know. Even but, though you, were, you don't need even to. though you were like, dude, nothing can make this easier. No, <laughs> I was like, I I'm just trying. gotta, I gotta muddle right. through it, and right, I right. gotta get over that moment. <laughs> And make it happen. Right. The learning, the growing pains, the learning yeah. part of the process. It's right. like we're, we're finding it. Like this is a, it's a brand new motorcycle shop. You know, it's like we're all wearing so many hats that like we haven't before. And, you know, right. yeah. you guys came on board with knowing, you know, I mean, I, I wear a bunch of hats. Anna wears a bunch of hats. I told Chris, I'm like, we got to wear a bunch of hats. You're a carpenter for a good couple of weeks there <laughs> <laughs> instead of a fucking mechanic, <laughs> you know, Justin, like handling many roles. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. It's like we, we got to do it. And yeah, some stuff's going to slip through the cracks. But at the end of the day, customer left happy, you know, right. his bike was running well, you know, and, right. you know, he's. Well, and, I, and I think for like the integrity of our team too, like um, it's kind of what you mentioned earlier, like you don't work with people who have egos. Nope. Like everyone here at the table is humble. Right. Nobody is like too big headed to admit that they messed up. Right. Because we are all learning. I mean, like you've been a master level tech for a bajillion years, but like I'm assuming like this is your first time having a hand in running your own shop, you know? And so it's like, yeah, it's it. I, I liken this to KPHD. The difference is. We started still, from an unpainted concrete slab. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we did. And um, the amount of, I hate to say it, but we get more attention in business here than we did at uh, Kena Harley, which is kind of Power of marketing, man. It is. <laughs> um, but, but even there, you, had, you, you were here on the chain, right? So I was service manager, technician, foreman service rider i was all of it the entire service department was me and then i had my gm and then from that point i had hr and then our owner you know and so you had these roles and then you had other departments with other equal individuals and we don't have that we, we are that <laughs> right exactly right, right, right and so that that extra little bit of deflection if you ever need it or that little bit of help or support just doesn't exist and when it was just me and Block, before you came on, that mm -hmm. was even tougher. To say the least. It right. was hard. Like, like I told you, I would spend most mornings up till noon or one just doing yep. quotes and answering emails. Dude, that was even just yesterday. I was like, I'm going to start an edit. And then boom, I was just doing office work, phone calls, ordering stuff, calling customers. Yep. For, and then next thing I know, six, seven hours just flash by. And yep. we're like, yep. oh, all right, we're leaving now. Dude, that's the yeah. thing. It's like, I mean, as we're... Like, this is a really unique thing that we have here because, you know, it's starting from YouTube and then we're, we basically got, you know, all these very supportive people out there that are willing to like bring us and trust us with, you know, their motorcycles. Right. And, you know, we've sh showcased why, you know, Chris being very specific, very detail oriented, like, you know, showing that. You know, he, he is a master, truly a master at his craft. I, I, I consider you an artist, honestly. I agree. And um, so for for people to basically like be seeing this and it's like just something that we're doing out of the enjoyment of it to be like, hey, yeah, like now we we're opening up a shop and it's just like, ah, sh shit. It's like <laughs> we start figuring out all these other things that like we didn't even think about, you know. Yeah. Right. And we're, we're kind of going through it and but we're, you know, we're doing it. You know, right. It's like we're sitting yeah. down here for the first podcast. Right. And, you know, we're we've got to go out there after this and move right. a bunch of stuff. So the floor is going to be redone. Right. It's like all part of the learning process. Actually, and that's, that's the happening thing. Like, right now, as a matter of fact, as we as we grow, as we like see these like bottlenecks, it's like we will address the stuff. But the foundation is super solid. And that's one of those things I've always like focused and aimed, you know, at, at creating is a solid foundation that we can build upon. And I I. I really think we have that. I think we have that here. Yeah. Uh, and so much of that is because of our, our subscribers, you know, the people out there that watch, that support you guys listening. Um, it's because of this team, because you guys making it all, you know, keep going. 
I was telling Justin the other day, I feel like I'm working myself out of a job. <laughs> by right. like, He's going to be out there playing golf. Bye, Blockhead. Golf. <laughs> yeah. out there playing golf uh, one day. Uh, like hi- hiring people uh, for like uh, the stuff uh, that I used to do. That's good. But yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a incredible journey and I really appreciate you guys taking it with me. Um, somebody commented and said the other day that uh, everybody needs a friend like Chris that's willing to like quit something super corporate and solid and stable. Dude, for, I like, told you in text, I, I said, I put my trust in you, not only mine, but the trust of my children's future. Oh, dude, that's the biggest thing that weighs on me, though. Oh, my is, gosh. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're like, and, and like, 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 I've like, talked to you about yeah, that. Yeah, we've talked about that yeah. because um, so like. Uh, like I didn't mention this when we first started, but so Chris was the first one to make the leap and go full time. Like I'm not even with the team full time. Like I have a full time job that I work and this is just like a side gig (laughs) for funsies. Um, but when we were like, you know, ramping up to this, that was like a conversation that we had because like you were worried about that and you're like, you know, Chris is putting his trust in me and like, you know, he, he's got kids, he's got a house. Like it's not just you know, like some young kid who, you know, can like lives in an apartment, could go back home. <laughs> right, right. <Some> cockroaches. <laughs> Damn, shots fired. Yeah, I know, right? Jeez, Whoops, that's not where I meant here, to go. Bro. What are you trying to say? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> but you know but what no, I mean? No, like, it. it's we... like when you have a family, like it's different. Like you got your kids to take care yeah. of, you know, and like that really weighed and weighs on his mind. So much. Yeah. yeah. I, like one of the biggest things that I said was like, you know, like I, I do feel responsible you know, and it's like, I want this to be a success, not only for me, but to provide like, I don't know, you and your children opportunity. And so that's why it's like, I got to bust. I know I got to bust ass. I know we got to like, you know, really work. And it's like, I think at this point in the process, if like somebody came on that like was just dragging ass, like it could fucking kill us. And so it's like, we got to really pick like right. and choose wisely. And I don't think that's been difficult thus far at all you know it's like we got yeah. a, a solid you know group of people y'all and um i know chris ain't afraid of work i know justin ain't afraid of work i see those, those i'm still up at one two <laughs> yeah. even after i've been here for you do i watch hours. your stories and you're posting out like Trust yeah. me. three in the I, morning I bro I mean, go to sleep <laughs> i think i think <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I can't just sit around and do nothing so it's like if i'm gonna go home it's like i don't really watch much tv so it's like i'm either trying to learn something or if not like in our case, we have so much content to edit, especially after a whole day of working, like brick and mortar. Then it's like, yeah, I might as well just work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like I'm like running myself to death, but I mean, I I, I enjoy it. So it almost doesn't feel like work to me. Yeah. Dude, so, so there, there are nights I leave here at 9 and 10. Yep. And then you called me yesterday and you were like ta- eight, talking yeah. about an estimate. We were talking about numbers. 30, I yeah. left and then. Yeah, I was replying to emails. I'm, right. I'm usually doing something yeah. till 10, 30, 11 o'clock at yeah. night. We th- I'm just, we're still working. But dude. I got to get up at 5.30 and get my kids up. So I right. I yeah. can't stay up till Too 3 late. anymore. But I mean, still, I mean, it goes to show that even beyond just being here, I mean, we're still all passionate about what we do. Yeah, like, yeah. That there's no time limit. We're just working. I think we that's gotta, like something else that leads to our success is like, like everyone here does it not only because it's like things that we're good at, like. Blockhead is an excellent content creator, you know, narrator, storytelling, everything else. Like Chris, excellent, you know, obviously, like Blockhead said, he's like an artist. Excellent trash talker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's his second title. You know, Justin, like freaking great editor, like bringing all his experience on board and like, and we're all. Uh, and Anna, a great herder of cats. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone here has ADD. It's a problem. <laughs> but it, like, we all do it also because it's something we enjoy. Yeah. Right. The passion fuels. Yeah. It. I agree. Yeah. So if you guys are listening, like through iTunes or whatever other source that you can't drop a comment, we are going to throw these up on YouTube as well, so that you guys, if you want to interact, drop a comment. Uh, I really want to take like a lot of y'all's feedback or recommendations for like future subjects, episodes, stuff that we should cover and uh, basically start integrating it into the podcast. We do have future plans on this for calling like people that are uh, manufacturers or leaders in the industry, uh, having conversation, you know, just about motorsports, motorcycles. Um, Yeah. So it's going to be a really cool platform to be able to like, I don't know, showcase. I think a lot of that being able to talk to people that, you know, design these motorcycles or, manufacture seats or talk about suspension or whatever it may be like we were able to get really deep into this so uh it's going to be a cool outlet i think what were you going to say i would like everybody in here to add one thing it can be the most random thing you want i'll start i like turtles and burlwood 
Hmm? And what? Don't oh, worry so we're about just, it. We're Go, just doing it's your turn. Things? Pearlwood? Yeah. Go ahead. It's your, your turn. Um, I'm sleepy. <laughs> Cheese pizza is my favorite kind of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> nah, pepperoni pineapple, yo. Uh, oral hygiene is key to life. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There right. we go. There you go. All right. Well, on that note, hope you guys have enjoyed <laughs> <laughs> the first Blockhead podcast. Big thanks to all of y'all. Be sure to go give them a follow at Captain Anna, at Iron J Moto, at Sick Wide Glide. Um, and I guess you should want to follow me too, at Blockhead Moto. <laughs> yeah. um, no, don't follow we him. Push <laughs> the, are we pushing the Facebook thing? Yeah, you guys go uh, give us a follow on Facebook. We're actually pushing Facebook. We've got to hit like 10,000 followers in order Anyone to... Anyone who's still on Facebook. Yeah, right? if you're still on Facebook. Uh, we got to hit 10,000 followers in order to unlock some cool features through there. Um, so, yeah, if you guys are uh, wanting to follow us on there, go give us a follow. Facebook.com slash BlockheadMoto. Find us on all the networks at slash BlockheadMoto. Um, yeah. And hopefully this gave you guys a good insight into kind of what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, I do really enjoy like the longer form content with us doing yeah. this first one. This was awesome. This was fun. Yeah, thanks, I guys. felt good about it. Like yeah. usually when we're recording videos, I never know really what to say. Right. But here it just feels like we're like, right, we're just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I be honest? I felt like mine was a little negative. I guarantee you there's going to be so many comments like Chris is so relatable. I yeah, totally dude. relate right. to Chris. Yeah, you like, can totally resonate with like a That's like real life experience, you, you know? Yeah, and but I feel like I might have been a little... It's not always no, rainbows man. and butterflies. Like. Right. That's that's the real. Right. That's reality. It's never you know? rainbows and butterflies. No. Yo, on note of rainbows and butterflies, don't ever drink that bang rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> It's no, funny because I, I saw that. It. I almost was it was good. Drink it. it tastes good, but it put me on the toilet in like thirty <laughs> minutes, dog. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's a whole night. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hope you guys have enjoyed Blackhead Podcast One. <laughs> we'll catch y'all in the next one. Later. <laughs>